Greetings, Dr. Emmerich here, and today I want to talk about analytics, which is how to measure your social media marketing plan. And there are lots of different analytical tools out there that you can use to make sure that you are doing what you want to do on each social media marketing platform. A lot of them are relatively easy to use and they're free. So there's no reason not to get to know them and to utilize them to make sure that you're meeting those goals and objectives in your plan. So I wanna talk about some of the most popular analytics that are out there. There's lots of different analytical tools, lots of different types of analytical um, things that you can measure. So I'm just gonna talk about some of the most basic ones to get you started in the world of social media marketing analytics. And then I'll actually take you into Google Analytics and Facebook Insights, which are two of the most popular places to um, look at your numbers and look at how your social media marketing plan is performing. So I wanna start though with the number one real concern everyone has with their social media is the volume. You know, How many people am I getting to follow me? And it isn't necessarily the most important part of a social media marketing plan. We seem to be consumed with volume, but when it comes to a return on our investment and our dollars in social media marketing, volume has not proven to be the most important thing. However, I still talk about it because it is important to know what it is, and it is important to know what your audience and who your audience is and how big your audience is. So it is really easy to, to measure on social media. It's um, the met metric that tells you how many people are following you on a specific social media platform. And every single one of them has a number of friends that you've allowed to follow you on that particular platform. And that's simply, simply the, the volume that you're getting. <clears throat> and it is a great indicator of interest. So you're not necessarily talking about someone who's going to buy from you, but it is a great indicator that you're getting a lot of interest about the topic that you're talking about. And that's really what volume tells you. But if you already have say 500 followers, so that's your volume, that might be a great number for you to start marketing to. And so it would be time not to worry about volume anymore, but to move over to content marketing and to supply those 500 followers with content that they're interested in. And that's where the other analytical measurements that we wanna talk about today come in. So volume is important. It's not the most important, it is the easiest. Um, but reach, Number two here is your post reach. So reach shows the number of unique people who have seen your post on a social media platform. So if you have an advertisement or if you just retweet or if you write an article or maybe you share a picture on your social media page, whoever sees that, that's your total reach. Whatever number of people see that particular post is your reach. And there's a difference between organic reach and paid reach. So organic reach is just going to your social media platform and creating a post, and we can all do that for free. And the amount of people that see that post, that's your organic reach. And each social media platform will measure that for you. They'll tell you how many people organically, or what that means is for free, are seeing a post that you've created on social media. But each platform also has something called paid reach. And that's where you can go and you can design an ad or design a post and you can pay that social media platform like Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. You can pay them to reach even more people, more people than just your followers. You can tell them, say, you wanna pay to reach a certain number of people between a certain age who behave a certain way, who live in a certain um, area. And you can pay for that, it's called paid reach, and reach even more people. You can do organic and you can do paid, and it just increases your reach or the number of unique people who see your particular post. And those numbers are really good to keep track of because you wanna know how many people are listening, how many people you're able to communicate with or get a message to on your social media. And that is the number of unique visitors. So that is REACH, a very important social media analytical tool. The next one is very similar. It's called impressions. 
So reach is the number of people. Impressions is the number of times they are exposed to a particular um, ad or post on social people on social media. So people might see something multiple times, and the same person who sees something multiple times that will increase your impressions. So you might want to um, have a post on social media for your audience of 500, but sometimes when somebody sees something just once, they might not take action or care about it. So you have to re um, keep putting that in that person's newsfeed till eventually they might want to interact with your content. So you want to increase the number of impressions or the number of times a person sees your particular post or advertisement on social media. So a simple example of that is if you want to pay, say, Facebook for 500 people to see your ad twice, your reach is 500. You have reached 500 unique people, but you've asked them to show that ad twice, so your impressions is 1,000. 500 people see an ad twice, that's 1,000 in your impressions. So a lot of people mix up reach and impressions, and they're very different numbers, and it's important to keep track of each one. And also, don't forget, we talked about organic reach. So organic reach, right, is when somebody shares your post. So not only are you going to pay or you're going to share with your audience of 500, but they're potentially going to share with their audience. And your reach or your number of unique people who see your ad increases organically or for free, right, from people sharing the content and the information that you've provided, which is another reason to take so much time with the content that you're putting out there and making sure your ads are really really informative and offer solutions to problems because you want to get that free advertisement or that free organic reach. <clears throat> so then the next thing is called engagement. So we've talked about how many people see your ad, right? And how many times they see your ad or your post on social media. But engagement means that they've done something with that particular post on social media. They've engaged with it. So they've liked it. They've commented to it. They've shared it, which is one of the most important things you can get your audience to do because of that organic reach. They maybe posted another um, image in your comment section or to go along with your post. On Twitter, it's called retweeting, right? You tweet something and then they retweet it to their audience and get that organic reach. <clears throat> and engagement is a really, it's one of the most important, it's probably even more important than volume. Because the number of people that you're friends with isn't as important as the number of people that you're friends with or who are following you who actually engage with you, who are actually enjoying your content, benefiting with your content, and sharing your content. And all the social media platforms do offer an engagement rate number for you. So you can see every single post and who engaged with it. And not only who engaged with your post, but these social media platforms break it down into demographics. So you can see the people of a certain age who interacted with a certain po post or a certain demographic or even behaviors. So it's really important to use these analytical tools that each social media platform gives you. They're almost all relatively free and very easy to use. So engagement. Engagement rate then, if you want to put that in a percentage form, you would take the number of um, the engagements that you get and divide that by your total impressions. Um, you could also divide it by your total reach if you just wanted to know your engagement rate for your audience or your engagement rate for all of your impressions. And you would get an engagement rate number, which is a percentage. And it's really important to keep track of that percentage. You might, might it might start at the beginning, you might have a 10% engagement rate just with your social media profile or your social media business page. You might have a 10% engagement rate. So you want to set some goals for yourself to increase that engagement rate, um, you know, maybe 10% every month. Or maybe you just want to get an engagement rate of 50% that everything that you might be paying for on social media. But it is important to have a goal or some met metric that measures that engagement rate so that you know it's really a sign of what your, your audience likes on social media. 
And then the last one, if we're just talking about the most important, there's lots more, and we'll talk about um, more, and you'll learn more as you dive into social media marketing, is conversions. Um, conversions goes one step farther than engagement. It, it's an action that somebody takes that is a sign of them buying from you. Either they actually go and buy from you, or it's a sign that they're going to buy from you. So a conversion might be somebody who, if you have an ad, they actually click on your website and they actually put merchandise in your cart and or buy. Once it gets in your cart, that might be considered a conversion. And then once they buy it, that's also a conversion. Maybe you want people to join your newsletter. That would be considered a conversion. Or maybe you want people to download a PDF. That would be considered a conversion. Or maybe you're just trying to get people's email to develop your email list. So if you get that person's email, that would be considered a conversion. So a conversion rate is really a number that tells you how many people have converted to a sale or a very strong potential sale of your product or service. And once again, these analytical platforms help you measure conversion by post. You can actually see what post created the most conversions. And if you posted something and it got no conversions or no engagement, that gives you a lot of information about the content that your customers or your audience want to see or they don't want to see. So engagements and conversions are important numbers to track. <clears throat> So let's look at some examples. So this is an example of a chart if you go to Facebook Insights. And if you want to get to Facebook Insights, kind of something just to note is if you have a profile page, a personal profile page, Facebook doesn't supply you insights or data like this. But if you go and you create a page, and I'll show you this in a second, a business page, then you can see your insights um, or your, your social media analytics um, on that um, for free on, 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 on your different social media platforms. So this is what a snapshot looks of Facebook insights. And you can see it gives you all kinds of different um, points of interest, like likes, reach, page views, how many people took action. <clears throat> and it tells you these, the specific numbers, um, page views, page likes. It even talks about post engagement. So you can get an engagement rate here just by um, dividing your total reach. So 30,000 people, unique people, saw this particular post. And almost 3,000 people engaged with that particular post. So you can get a rate. And that's a great starting point for a business. What is that rate? Is it 10%? Um, Has it gone up? Is that what we're looking for? Maybe we're looking for more of a 30 or 40% engagement rate. And it tells you right here. And it also keeps track. Um, you can see these numbers in red. If it's a better engagement than you got from a previous post, if that number goes up or down. So there's a lot on Facebook Insights to just look around um, and play around with because it's a very free um, it's free and it's very good information. You don't want to keep posting the same thing if nobody's engaging or converting from that data. So um, another place to go for analytics that is free is Google Analytics. And I'll take you there in a second. <clears throat> and these, this information tells you about conversion. It will tell you how many people you got in your website. So if, if you have 100 people who visit your website, how many people did you get a sale from on that website? And that's pretty cool information. Um, to know if you are interested in not only getting people to read your website or to read the information that you offer, but you also want to convert them into money and profits. And so Google Analytics will tell you that information. <clears throat> and I have it in this box for you can see these conversion rates um, for this particular website. <clears throat> and the company also, it also tells you um, how many people went to the website how long they were on your website. And they'll break it down by page. You can see how many people went to a certain page on your website and how long they were on that website. It also gives you this um, another social media analytic, which is called bounce rate. And bounce rate is the number of people who go to your website and then leave it. So um, they didn't do anything. They didn't take any action. They just went to your website and they bounced right off it and, and went and did something else um, as well. So very insightful information. <clears throat> And I'll take you in Google um, Analytics to show you what this column, it's kind of cut off here, but we'll take a look at it live in a second, all the different things you can look for in Google Analytics. In box two here, it says goal one. And so what it 
Google Analytics allows you to do is plug your personal goals right into the analytical platform. So if you have a goal of 20% conversions, you can plug that right into Google Analytics and they will tell you how close you are to meeting your goal. And so that's what is done here um, in box two. <clears throat> so I wanna take you into um, Google Analytics. So this is, um, it's, it's actually just analytics.google.com and this is what the screen would look like when you bring it up. And in this search engine right here, you can plug in your particular website to get data you need about that website. <clears throat> and what Google Analytics allows you to do is to customize reports. Over here it says customize if it's cut out. Um, you can customize your own reports if there's particular things you wanna see. You can get real time data. So if I click on real time overview, you can see how many people are currently on your website right now. So right now on my particular website, for my class, I have 44 people right now who are currently on my website. Um, so that's just kind of cool information. You can see also what websites they came from before they came to your website. <clears throat> the keywords that they might have plugged in to Google when they came to your website. There's location data. You know, what part of the world are they coming from? There's that traffic sources, which um, dives into where your customers are coming from and what were they previously searching for when they were on the internet. If you click down here to audience, it gives you all kinds of demographic and geographic and psychographic data about the people that are on your website. You know, what time of day were they on there? And that's just not about your website, excuse me. It's also, you can put in a social media platform or a social media page that you have and get the same kind of data. There's behaviors that you can look at and analyze. Uh, there's a mobile, this one says mobile. So you can see of your customers who are coming from mobile, um, how many of them are converting or engaging with your content. So Google Analytics is a very handy um, social media tool to become familiar with to understand what your, how your social media marketing plan is performing and how your content is doing. And then the next one is um, Facebook Insights. And you can see it, now if you have a platform, like I said, you're not gonna see the, the insights, but if you have a page for your business, and I created this particular page just to be able to show this, um, but now my students are, um, I want my students to follow this page because I'm putting some information um, I'm using this page for my students to get information and some research data that they need for various projects. Um, it also gives me some um, insight data to be able to show when I'm teaching this. But um, all you have to do is have a page and you can click right on that insights and just look at all this information it gives you. It gives you that reach data. It gives you impression data. It gives you engagement data. Um, so you can see by post what is really working and what is not working. And Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn all offer very similar things um, to this as well. <clears throat> Just to wrap it up then, I do wanna talk about um, one summary. It's called KPI, because a lot of people say, well, what are KPIs? They bring it up all the time and they don't know what it is. And a KPI stands for Key Performance Indicators. Key Performance Indicators. So those are, the numbers are usually numbers or a percentage that indicate if your plan is working or not. So when you come up with your social media marketing plan, you're gonna to wanna to think of a few, maybe three, four KPIs or key performance indicators that are gonna tell you if your social media plan is working or not. And that'll help you decide, okay, we need to go back to the drawing board, we need different content, maybe we need to be on a different social media platform or not if you're not meeting those KPIs. Um, at the beginning, your KPIs should be very flexible because you're just learning and maybe you don't know um, what a good number is for you and you, you strive for 25%, but you, you hit 50 really easily. So you'd wanna change your KPI to 75% instead. But keep those KPIs and those key, um, key performance indicators in front of you at all times so you know you're constantly getting better, improving and engaging with your audience and getting those conversions so that you have a better return on your investment or ROI. So, and that's really just the tip of the iceberg with analytics. It's a great place to start um, and really make sure you're performing well and you're getting the outcome you want from your social media marketing. Thank you.